there's been some posts on the web i've been reading some posts on the web and there's also been some videos on here you, you know uh, about uh, a backdoor uh, virus or hack or something something to do with xz i don't really understand it but something to do with xz in view of what's been happening with the back door and that i mean you, you know the it's xz i don't really understand it myself but in view of what's happening with uh, this back door thing uh, you know what i want to bring up today is uh, should linux users start using an antivirus protection you know let's talk antivirus in linux as we just saw from andrew's video about um xz there's some general worry around the community about protecting yourself and what you can do. Now Linux doesn't really have antivirus the same way Windows did. But what it does have is tools that can check and uh, see if anyone's made any changes to your programs. So let me get the first one out of the out of the way. And that's gonna be Clam A V. Now Clam A V doesn't protect you from Windows viruses. What it is is a uh, I think the best way to say it is if you're running an email server uh, on your Linux server, you use Clam AV as a way to scan all the incoming emails coming in and remove any viruses that it finds. You, you know, basically you're being a good netizen and you're stopping yourself become a spreader of, of viruses, which is great. And that's when you want this tool. From running Clam AV on your system though, ain't doing nothing I'm afraid. But what can we do? Now there's a handy little tool called a check rootkit. I'll uh, show you how it's doing on Gen 2. Okay, so we've got that done. And then what this does on most distributions is set up a cron tab as you can see uh, on Gen 2. If you use the cron use flag it will add it to a weekly but you just you just add it to slash etc cron.weekly and run the command. Now, if we run this for the first time ourselves, you can see that it runs through all the programs to see if anything's infected. So, what is runs? Let's go over some of the things. Um, why Linux is a little bit more secure than the way Windows does. Well, the main one is the repository system. Everything that's packaged up is checked by many people before it gets added. So in Windows, yeah, you normally just go and download a random exe, or from the internet and install it. It's right for being ready to be abused, really. I could make my fancy text editor tomorrow, put some malicious code in, and away it works. On Linux, we grab everything from a central repository system, so in Gen 2 I use the portage system, Debian will be using app, Fedora, whatever you guys use. We've got the benefit of many eyes checking it, yes things get passed, as we've learned from XZ the other day. Um, there's not really much you can do about a, a very well targeted attack but generally speaking that is our main thing now where linux security will fall down is i don't know if you've seen the uh, rise of sudo curl install.sh scripts that's a place that could be used as a backdoor so things like that are things you should be very wary about using um, also using um, user-based um, repositories such as AUR in Arch or Guru in Gen2, there's a possibility of those not being under the same scrutiny as a main package. And something we've seen be done. So what do we do in them situations when we need an application for them? Well, in those cases you need to check really to make sure. Um, nothing has been done on them um, that's one of the main things never never assume that you are too good to be hacked because that's what hackers are planning for another um, another way you're getting hacked is, is 
if you notice on support forums people paste commands around it's the quickest way to get a fix out there now generally speaking for every command that's written on a site there's three or four other people looking at that command to make sure it's okay what you need to be very wary about is if someone's taking you into a private area like a dm or a pm and asking to help you there because if they're taking you into them sort of place that's when people are most likely to be putting malicious code onto your system and when you need to be most wary so to wrap up what will we learn here security is a process not a switch the next system itself is very good for this it works to this policy rather than assumes it all on the user but we do need to remember we are the weakest link in the entire security thing us being desperate to get some code working and we've all been there we've all been there when snap patch that program sorry doesn't work and we need to get it working today and we've just downloaded some random piece of code that's when you're going to get caught out there are applications out there like check root hunters and root get hunters but we'll but just be that last little line of defense just to tell you yep yeah, you messed up today and here's what's happened and then you can work with it but at least we can take the guesswork out and we can uh, and we can see basically if we need to take any action so i hope this helps everyone just to try and give you a general uh, an overview of why we don't use antivirus in the same way Windows does and hopefully just to alleviate some of the anxiety going around after X said the other day. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Are there any programs that you know that help that can work? I'd be interested in seeing. But for now folks, keep compiling and uh, I'm just going to let this finish in the background because I feel like it's going to take a little while for its first month. Keep compiling. So it's clear I have a gender addiction. If you want to help enable me and in exchange make interesting videos for you, why not consider being like these wonderful people and donating to me? Um, prices start at $1 and it helps me to do tasks such as these. Please consider um, clicking on the Patreon link to find out more. Cheers guys.